Hey there. <clears throat> Do you have a new photo when you come on? You've got your compass. Yeah, I, don't know why it's, I don't know why it's the compass one. I don't really understand. <laughs> like I was in six hours of meetings. Maybe that's why. Hey, look, I wanted to show you what I got, what I got, what I got, what I got. Um, you see? <gasps> you got one! <laughs> Where did you get that? Etsy. You know what? That is so crazy because I've looked so many times on Etsy for anything with that. Like, I'll take a magnet. I'll take a print. I'll take a this. I'll take oh, a that. Yeah. And I've never oh, seen one that's nice. Ah, there's somebody who makes like celebrity mug shots, um, mm -hmm. and and um, they and they put, like different color backgrounds on them. And so this is kind of an orangey red. Was it from the states? No, I think it might be from the UK. Oh, so maybe it's that maybe it's that the UK yeah. vendors don't show up on the US. Maybe. Let me just see. I uh, love it. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. I'm really I'm really happy with it. Um I bet you are. -E -E mugshots. Yeah, it was only it was like really cheap celebrity it was, it was more to frame it than it was to <laughs> oh, no, even the frame was only like a five pounds yeah so if you um oh yeah there's quite a few let me see try and remember now which one was it i mean it's been a while since i've looked for that but yeah i think it's a company, it's a company called round cube studio okay i think i'll send you the link yeah oh no that's belfast northern ireland actually um and they've got like uh elvis and bill gates Stephen queen right yeah frank sinatra wait it's called round cube um round cube studio okay oh yeah yeah i was just looking at etsy last night i hadn't yeah they're in belfast yeah 8.99 that's like so cheap right Yeah, they've got some. I've got. I've bought some nice new pictures on Etsy just because. Um, just to yeah, there you up. go. Jane comes up first. Yeah, uh, Rosa Parks, Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, Tiger Woods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's gross. There. <laughs> show Dana again what's on your wall. Yeah. What you um, got? I got I got his new picture. I'm sure you can see the light's not working in my. Can you see it? Oh wow! It's Jane That's Fonda's awesome. mug shot, which Rosalind has always loved. Really? My mom would crap herself. Really? Okay. Well, <laughs> we can tell you where to get it on Etsy, and, and then you go through, and it's all of these different mug shots. Oh, nice. And you get like you know, it's lots of nice different backgrounds. So it's like a really nice kind of shocking pink background as well. And um, yeah, uh, that one looks really good. There's yeah. Prince Bill Gates. What the heck would Bill Gates? Yeah, I, have been I'm wondering for? if some of those are like made up. Um, <laughs> Janis Joplin. Um, there's Jim oh. Morrison. James, James Brown's <laughs> not a shocker. <laughs> Fifty Cent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two pack. Two pack. I um, really enjoy people's mug shots when they're really fucked up. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know that sounds that. really mean. And you know, they're like yeah. all crying. I know. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> yeah, I love the um, the Hugh Grant one. Is is. Uh... <gasps> oh my God! I forgot about that. Yeah, let me, wow. let me share the screen for that one. Hang on. Of you haven't come across mine yet, have you? No, not you're yet. not enough of a celebrity, Chris. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not, not a celebrity. No, I'm joking. Uh, hang on. Share screen. I'm going to just make my own. So, like, here's, yeah, here's. Uh, oh. oh, yeah. Look at him. He just looks like really. He's, I'm yeah. so impatient right now. <laughs> There's actually a really good, we, me and I were watching like a really good documentary with him. Yes, or not a documentary, like a film about his kind of career. And he's so funny because he's so tongue in cheek. He is funny. He's so disparaging about his own, you know, career path and everything. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. Has anyone seen The Gentleman yet? No. Is it good? Is that a new I one with him? Really funny. Matthew McConaughey, Hugh Grant. <laughs> uh, Dana, Dana, I just noticed what you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> You're like something from a bug's life, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, from, I was, like I said, I had, we're cleaning out the garage and we were reorganizing Halloween stuff, Kevin and I, that we'd had forever. And so I just grabbed a couple of things out of the box that mm -hmm. I might entertain myself with this month. <laughs> and us, we appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Emily <clears throat> looked really cute in her bee costume. Yeah, they're very cute. Uh, um, yes, the movie The Gentleman. It's about a, um, Matthew McConaughey is an American um, kind of weed kingpin and trying to. Um, it's just all about about the pot growing business and different groups of people and and the story. Uh, Michelle Dockery is in it too. She's great. Uh -huh. I love her. Uh, Anyway, it's a Guy Ritchie movie, so you know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is it in, is it on Netflix or? I don't know if it's on Netflix yet. Um, right. But it doesn't hurt to have a look and see. Yeah. It's just an, it's amusing. I love movies about weed, so whatever. <laughs> there seems to be a, a lot of those, and. Uh, <laughs> And the narco type stuff, I come out of Mexico, I'm like, okay, if I see another one of those, I don't need to see another one. <laughs> I like the funny ones. If it's, I don't like the ones oh, where like Scarface kind of, that's, that gives me big anxiety. Now I just want, I want to smoke some weed and laugh while I'm watching other people do stuff with weed. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like the, the TV series weed with, um, I'm forgetting the woman, the actress's oh, name. Oh gosh, that was so that was a while long ago. ago. Yeah, when it I was think good. about it now, yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was good. I watched the first couple of seasons and then I just kind of like- Mary Louise Parker. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, I watched maybe the first season and really liked it, but- Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I only saw the first episode, I think. It's so funny now because when I think about it, because it's legal in so many places in the States now that it doesn't have the same weightiness as it used to. Not in Virginia. I've got a no. dog. Certainly not in Oregon. It's not legal in Virginia yet? Yeah, but all you got to do is just drive over the river. Do you know what we're... No, but well, DC, you know it's decriminalized, but it's not, it's not, um, there's not dispensaries in, in oh, okay. so I it's, dec it's decrim up to, you know, <clears throat> an ounce or something, whatever personal use, but there's not, um, yeah. so when you're out on the street, you smell it all the time because everybody's smoking on the street, but there's no dispensaries or anything. That's a shame. Everybody yeah. needs to have a dispensary. Every, anywhere home. near us. No, my first time going into a dispensary <laughs> was in Portland with Kate. It's fun, isn't it? I'd never been, yeah. <gasps> yeah, yeah, I tried to get my dad to go in with me when he came last night and he, he was not interested. I was really disappointed. I'm like, come on. You're not Wait, he's vis your dad's visiting you right now? No, this was a couple of years ago when oh. he came out to visit. I thought you said last time. night and I was like, wow. Last year, I think it was. I've lost all track of time. I don't know when You're he came using to see me. It just kind of went together, apparently. Yeah. For <laughs> <laughs> the bumblebees. Do you know what we're voting on this year? Have you guys heard? In, in Oregon? Yes. Oh, yay, I do. We're voting on whether um, microdosing with mushrooms is an okay. There's a more technical term for it. I know Dana probably knows it, but. Oh, for. Um, rooms or not. Oh, it's therapeutic mushroom. Uh, yeah, therapeutic for like um, environment. PTSD and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I highly recommend it. Um, I mean, obviously, I've never done it in a controlled setting with somebody holding my hand that I didn't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I heard about that on NPR. So <laughs> I'm heading for it. I think it's great. I mean, I think if it can help people that have PTSD or severe anxiety, um, especially people nearing the end of their lives with terminal diseases. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just like any people. other pharmaceutical. I don't know why it's yeah. Just because hey. it's been used as a recreational drug doesn't mean that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've decriminalized it in Denver, I think a year ago or so. Denver voted on it and decriminalized it. 
That's good. I'm glad to hear that. I mean, it really does. It does make a difference and it, it helps people. Um, I know that uh, it certainly changed my, um, my world view or my universal view after my first experience many years ago. I was just, wow. It's, it's hard to describe. It's worth it. But it is good to do it with, with people, you know, if it's your first time. <laughs> Somebody who's used it before. Don't over mushroom. Oh, yeah. Is that worse than over uh, smoking pot the first time? It what? Is it worse than overdoing like uh, weed or something else then? Yeah, no it, it's, it's just different. Um, yeah. yeah, I... You know, and not every mushroom is the same, just like not no. every weed. I mean, obviously they're all psilocybin, so they're, or Liberty Cap. Or, I mean, you definitely want to eat the right kind of mushroom. If you see it growing out of a cow pat, then you're good. Because that's <laughs> where the... <laughs> <laughs> if you can connect it back to the source. We come, gosh, it was years ago. We were on Maui, like at the far end of Maui in the town of Hana. And we um, went out with our friend who lives there and just drove, parked on the side of the road because Maui is ranch country. There's lots and lots of cows. Um, hopped over this fence and climbed up to the top of the hill with our little brown paper bags and just went from cow pie to cow pie looking for little mushrooms. <laughs> and then <laughs> took them back and washed them off and had them for lunch. <laughs> can, like, can you do like normal mushrooms grow in cow pats as well though i don't think so i don't think so i think it's pretty specific environment for that type of mushroom yeah. um but i, I, I haven't had no um, idea that they grew in cow pats that's the what that was what i got through my my friend who lived up on maui at the time was um that was what they did. They they grew weed. Excuse me. They grew papayas uh, <laughs> up in the hills and, and went scouting for mushrooms. It's a pretty sweet life. Oh, papayas. Hmm. I never went up to see their papayas. It was a long, long hike up into the mountains. And she said, "You guys would probably have a lot better day um, on the beach," which we did. You can um, kind of imagine, Rosaline, yeah, papaya leaves do look like, yeah, I mean, they're yeah, big yeah, and leafy wondering. like that, yeah. yeah I'm was, that's what was going on in Indonesia with all those papayas. Probably. I think those were real papayas. <laughs> well, I guess papayas are a really good cover for weed. Yeah, that's what I mean. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, I think, yes, vote, vote yes on mushrooms. Measure whatever it is. I, I plan on it. Yay. <laughs> You guys are, are, you already have your mail ballots and are ready to mail them back in or? Not yet. I'm checking the mailbox every day. Chris, do you have your yet? Just yesterday. Excellent. I'll go out and check our mail this afternoon. Yeah, I'm filling mm -hmm. it out as soon as possible and I'm driving it straight over to the ballot box. <laughs> I, I, told, I told Dawn I'm going to wait for her to vote and then I'm just going to vote opposite of everything she votes so we just kind of cancel each other out. <laughs> You're so mean. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's kind of what happened in my family for a long time, that I was canceled out by my family members, um, or that was at least how it felt. But now that my brother um, has decided that he's going to switch over, I mean, I, I'm sure he's still a registered Republican, but he is not happy with anything that's happened. And all of his West Point friends are all the same way. They're like, fuck this shit. Um, so there are a lot of Republicans, military Republicans, that are, are not voting for Donald Trump. So and he's in, he's in Maryland? Where is he's he? He's in Louisiana now. He lives oh, in Louisiana. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he's there, you know, and he's got, he has four kids, three of which are voting age. So they're all going to cancel out my parents. <laughs> my poor parents. I wish I could help them. He said to me that... Um, I had texted with him a couple of weeks ago and asked him if he had spoken to mom and dad about, you know, about Donald Trump. And he said, no. He said, if they're not smart enough to figure it out for themselves, I'm not going to be able to change their mind. Yeah. And I was like, damn, that's, <laughs> that's. Oh, at this point yeah. in this juncture, yeah, if you're, you're set. It'd be like yeah. someone trying to convince you to vote for Donald Trump. 
Yeah, it would never happen. No. But I mean, I think for me, because I, I just, when you first decided to run, I, all I could remember was when I was in college in the 80s and all throughout the dorm room, there'd be People Magazine, you know, all of that kind of crap. And he always ended up either on the cover or somewhere inside those magazines. And it, he just repulsed me even then, you know, mm -hmm. his gold plated toilets and his, <clears throat> ugh, yeah. I mean, I just couldn't even, there was no way you would have been able to convince me because he is what he is. He's always been what yeah, he is. Yeah, he's always been that way, yeah. He was broken when he was born. <laughs> oh, wow. His That's poor so Scottish true. mother. I'm, I'm sure she's spinning in her grave. At least I hope she is. I mean, a part of me kind of wants to read that book by his niece, but, um, you know, the one who says he's a psychopath. But on the other hand, like, well, it's not even me. We all know you, you can you can listen to an interview with her and get the highlights pretty. Oh really? Pretty yeah, quick. True. yeah. True. 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 Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that it would be really exciting to read John Bolton's book, even though he's a complete knob. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, is knob? Do you, is have you just said that? Have you is that an English influence in your life or husband influence? Or Americans don't say knobs, do they? I don't think a lot of Americans do, but I, it's been part of my vocabulary for a very long time. So I probably picked it up. Um, I don't know. I, I've had so many, <clears throat> so many different influences over the years. Yeah. But I think it's a knob wonderful is, word. Knob we is also, great. It's great. Yes, knob is. There are also a lot of places in the mountains um, in Appalachia, North Carolina, that actually use the term knob. Mm -hmm. um, like there's bald knob, there's like, you know, just really weird names. You go into the mountains and it's yes. a little sign on, you know what I'm talking about, Chris. Yes. Yeah, like, uh, but does, it all, does it all mean the same thing? I don't know about the Appalachian knob, if it's the same thing, what she's saying. I think when yeah. I think of a knob, in that context, just on the top of a hill, like a knob stick out. Yeah. It's po entirely possible that um, it was the Scots that brought the term when they came in the 1700s. Yeah, that makes um, sense. Yeah. Because yeah. they settled up, they settled that area pretty heavily. They did. I was actually having a big long conversation <clears throat> with my dad about it because he's a Revolutionary War historian and he's been, he, he's amazing for what he knows about, about the Revolutionary War in the Southeast. Um, which I don't think a lot of people think about when they think about the American Revolution. They think about, you know, Philadelphia. And right. Yeah. Boston. They think about the. Yeah. There the was a lot country. that was happening in the interior of North Carolina and South Carolina yep. on the border. A lot of. Green? It's basically the, main, the Green one of the main players. What? Seems like I remember a guy named Green with an E on the end. Um, there's like Nathaniel a... Green. Um, Francis Marion, you may have heard of him. He was known as mm -hmm. the smallpox. Um, but it was basically the British up against um, all of these Scots-Irish that were living in the area. And you can imagine how, I mean, if you're talking about the mid to late 1700s, how pissed off the Scots would have been to see the British mm -hmm. tromping around, you know. So, And they were excellent at guerrilla warfare, which just yeah. fills me with glee. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, I don't there's know. Really, I um, there's a really, there's a really interesting book by Bill Bryson called. Um, maybe it's called Made in America. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, it's called something like. The one where he he traces the English language. Right. Oh, yeah. He's funny. Yeah. He is. He's 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 not as funny as he used to be. I think. Um, but no. he. But this is this is one of his older books, and so interesting. Yeah, it is called Made in America. Yeah. Sheila so made me read that one. Sheila yeah. Town. <laughs> well, what I like about it is that you know English people can be so snobby about um, British English and how <clears throat> Americans Americans don't speak proper English, um, and and so he kind of like traces the kind of ethnography and the kind of historical pathways of words, and actually a lot of the time American English is old English mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, you know that is just is no longer used in the UK it's because it's you know that evolved in a different direction it's, it's really so interesting mm. I think that you know 
Laurel, I don't know if you've ever been down to, um, I guess, like around Matthews area, the the necks that are um, in the southern part of Virginia on the Chesapeake Bay. I haven't been down to that area, no. We have cousins that live there, and I hadn't met them up until maybe 10 years ago, but they have this southern accent that is really, really similar to to kind of a gentle English accent, just the way that they speak. And it's not, it's not that heavy Southern accent that you'd imagine when you, mm -hmm. you know, when people say, oh, they have a Southern accent. It's very cultured and, and odd. And I think it, it comes from the fact that there are not a whole lot of people that live in that part of Virginia. And the ones that do have been there for a very long time. <laughs> I mean, I know the Machins who are my cousins have been there since the late 1600s. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, guess, all of my family has been in America for easily 400 years. I wow. mean, within that time period, they jumped ship when they had the chance. Mm. <laughs> and then they were horrible rebels. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's fun. You're right about the English language, though. It's fascinating, isn't it? And it's so, so many people and so many accents. Oh well, I mean accents even within even within very small geographical areas, the accents are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. have you noticed the Australian accent is super regional? I mean, I guess the English English accent is regional as well. Australians always say to me that there isn't a huge variation in in regional accents. Like Australians can kind of tell when somebody's from you know, No, I just I I think and I have heard that said you know, by Australians that know we all sound the same, but no, they don't. I mean, yeah. like Peter's, Peter's from Adelaide originally and his accent, he's mistaken for an Englishman all the time. And it yeah, but in Adelaide, Adelaide people are quite posh and-, and Right, and, uh, right. They do. Yeah, my friend Penny's, it's, it's, it's yeah. Whereas Outback, you know. Yeah. Right, the more- yeah. crass or yeah working class accents like i was listening to peter on a call with his two high school friends the other night and peter's from adelaide his friend paul is from melbourne and his friend ross has lived in queensland forever and listening to they all have very distinct accents to mm -hmm. my ear right um, and ross's sounds the most kind of crocodile dundee-ish right yeah like that really hard yeah, that is, it's <laughs> almost like it's opposite it's like that deep south accent that you get in georgia or alabama except it's australianized and it's in the north mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. hmm. okay well should we get going today mm -hmm. sure.